When I first arrived in the Sahara, I was just struck by how utterly barren it was. It's like the color green was removed from the palette when they made this place. Just nothing, grays and browns, and not a scrap of life. They thought the Sahara would bury the experiment without a trace. Yet in the dead center of the world's harshest desert, far from cameras and witnesses, a team of scientists carried out a test no government wanted linked to their name. This is the killer bee location. We're gonna make a killer bee experiment. They arrived with sealed crates of frozen honeybees and a single disturbing goal. They wanted to see if fragile life could endure a landscape built to kill anything that moves. The instant the lids opened, the team witnessed a reaction that made several researchers back away in disbelief. It was something far more unsettling, and none of them wanted to say aloud what it resembled. The experiment. In 2020, a global team of entomologists arrived with millions of honeybees frozen solid, preserved under brutal cold to keep them alive for months. These weren't garden pollinators, they were biological experiments. The plan was simple in theory, release them into one of Earth's hottest, driest regions and see if life could resist the desert's silent hostility. Could bees handle days that scorched and nights that froze? Could they find water, food, any foothold at all in dunes designed to starve everything? The scientists mapped the terrain with exacting detail, laying out sensors to record temperature swings, humidity drops, even subtle movements in shifting sand. Drones circled overhead, watching for the faintest sign of adaptation. One mistake could end the entire project in seconds. When the first bees thawed and took their hesitant steps into the Sahara, the desert seemed to swallow them instantly. Cameras captured them staggering, wings quivering, bodies struggling to orient under the blistering sky. The tension was unbearable, Either they adapted, or the heat would finish them before the experiment even began. Most died almost immediately, but a stubborn few clung to life, gathering around microscopic traces of moisture, or the rare stubborn shrubs that had managed to bloom in the sand. It felt as though the desert tolerated their presence, but only on its own merciless terms. The researchers didn't interfere. Their duty was to observe, not rescue. So every flicker of movement became a miracle. Every flight, every sip of dew, every moment the bees defied the desert's rules felt like a victory carved out of impossible odds. No one could predict what came next. Would the bees disappear into the dunes, lost forever to the heat, or would they carve out a new existence where nothing should logically thrive? The full answer would take time, but the revelations from those first tense hours were enough to shake even the most hardened scientists. The Logistics of a Million Bee Release the real tension began after arrival. The bees couldn't simply be thawed at once. Each batch had to be released with precision. It has to be the right hour, the right wind direction, the nearest scrap of vegetation. A single miscalculation could wipe out the data before the experiment even began. Each release area had been chosen with intention. Some offered tiny shrubs, others held pockets of moisture or narrow shaded spaces where the faintest signs of life might endure. The desert demanded perfection and the scientists knew it. Then came the extremes. Daytime heat above 50 degrees, nights dropping toward freezing, winds shifting without warning, sometimes spinning into sudden sandstorms that could erase a microcolony in seconds. Researchers spent hours studying satellite feeds, sensors, and drones just to pick the safest moments. Tracking the bees became its own battle. Millions of insects scattered across a hostile landscape meant the team needed microchips and survival tags small enough to avoid weighing the bees down. Drones swept the dunes, and each signal that returned felt like a heartbeat. Every release was nerve-wracking. The bees lifted into blistering air, and for long stretches the desert offered nothing back. Storms, predators, and temperature swings meant every batch was a gamble. By the time the last bees were released, the team was exhausted. They had set one of the boldest experiments in motion, but now the Sahara held the outcome in its hands. Immediate Survival Yet, among the losses, there were small pockets of hope. Tiny clusters of bees were huddled together, their bodies pressed close, almost instinctively forming miniature shelters. Some found refuge near small patches of moisture that had collected overnight, while others clung to rare desert shrubs that somehow survived the harsh conditions. These were the first signs that some bees were not just surviving, but responding to the environment in ways the scientists had never imagined. The researchers began analyzing every detail of these behaviors. Why were these bees clustering while the majority perished? 
How were they finding the scarce water sources? What made certain plants, like the hardy acacia and a few resilient shrubs, magnets for survival? The team realized that even in one of the harshest climates on Earth, nature's tiniest engineers were finding solutions on their own. The drones would capture a bee struggling against the wind, only to see it finally land on a shrub or dip into a drop of dew. Each surviving bee felt like a thread of hope. For a moment, it looked as if the desert would swallow the colonies completely. Then the data began to reveal something no one expected. Some subgroups were adjusting their behavior far faster than expected. They were changing foraging patterns, adjusting flight times to avoid the peak sun, and clustering in ways that maximized their chance of survival. It became clear that these bees were exhibiting a previously unknown desert tolerance potential. The scientists could barely keep up with documenting the adaptations. Even small details mattered. The angle at which a bee landed on a shrub, the way it clustered with its companions, and the timing of its movements all became critical pieces of information. If the patterns observed in these few survivors could spread to other colonies, it might mean something far bigger. Honeybees could endure environments that had been considered impossible. By the end of the first day, the scientists were exhausted and exhilarated at the same time. They had watched a massacre of millions of bees, but they had also glimpsed the incredible power of survival instincts in action. The Sahara had claimed the majority, but it had also revealed a sliver of life that refused to die. The question now loomed larger than ever. Could these few survivors endure long enough to reproduce, adapt fully, and create a lasting colony in the desert? Every second of the next few days would answer that question, and the suspense was unbearable. The Bee's Adaptive Behavior as the weeks slowly turned into months, the small number of surviving bees began to show something no one had predicted. What started as a desperate fight to stay alive was changing into a display of surprising intelligence. The bees were learning how to exist in the desert in their own way, adapting to challenges that should have wiped them out. They began forming micro-colonies underground, burrowing into small hollows and sand crevices to escape the relentless sun. These tiny shelters became hubs of activity, a hidden world beneath the harsh surface. The scientists watched in amazement as the bees coordinated their movements, creating pathways and chambers that maximized shade and minimized exposure. It was survival like no one had ever documented before. Foraging habits changed too. Instead of wandering aimlessly under the blistering sun, the bees restricted their activity to dawn and dusk, when temperatures were more forgiving. Every flight was calculated. They hovered over shrubs with precision, collecting what little nectar was available and avoiding the hottest hours entirely. The drones captured each careful movement, revealing a level of strategic planning in the desert that had never been seen in honeybees before. With no streams or ponds, the bees learned to rely on dew condensation that formed on plant leaves overnight. They landed delicately, extracting tiny droplets one at a time. Every sip mattered, and missing a drop could be fatal. The scientists recorded this with infrared cameras, showing the bees' precise coordination in finding and sharing these rare water sources. The desert itself began to show a quiet change. Plants that had struggled for years started carrying traces of pollen, and a few even pushed out fresh blooms more often than before. The bees were not just holding on, they were leaving small but undeniable marks on the land around them. This was no longer a survival, but the start of a new desert ecosystem taking shape, with the bees acting as a delicate but powerful force inside it. The bees were adapting physically. Some had developed slightly darker wings and thicker exoskeletons, which seemed to help them retain moisture and resist heat. Others had stronger legs for gripping coarse sand and plants. These changes were far from random. There were clear signs that the bees were adapting quickly to one of the most extreme climates on Earth. A sudden sandstorm could destroy a microcolony in minutes, while predatory insects and desert birds constantly threatened the fragile clusters struggling to survive. The scientists tracked each threat closely, knowing that a single misstep could end months of careful observation. Yet despite the danger, the bees continued to adjust, and each day that passed without catastrophe felt like a small miracle. By the end of the third month, it became clear that these bees were more than just survivors. They were pioneers carving out a hidden niche in the desert and showing a level of intelligence no one had predicted. The question now was bigger than survival. Could these bees thrive long enough to reproduce and establish permanent colonies in a place no one thought possible? Unexpected Ecological Impact By the sixth month, something unexpected began to emerge. The few surviving bee colonies were no longer caught in a fight for survival. They were changing the desert itself, Plants that had been sparse and almost invisible now showed subtle signs of life. 
flowers opened more fully, and researchers realized that the bees were pollinating species that had been largely ignored until now. Some shrubs saw their seed production increase by nearly a quarter, an effect that no one had expected in such an unforgiving environment. The scientists dug deeper, taking soil samples around the areas where the bees clustered. What they found was astonishing. Nitrogen levels were slightly higher, and microbial activity had risen. These were tiny changes, but in the desert, even small differences in soil chemistry can ripple through the ecosystem. The bees, seemingly fragile and insignificant, were quietly reworking the very foundation of life in their zones. It wasn't just plants that responded. Birds that had rarely been spotted in these barren areas began visiting the newly blossoming shrubs, searching for seeds and insects. Small mammals, too, were observed scuttling closer to the patches of bee activity. The desert was forming a delicate, hidden web of interactions, an emergent micro-ecosystem that had never existed before. Every sighting sent a new surge of suspense through the team. The researchers were watching life push back against some of the toughest conditions on Earth, and doing so in ways nearly impossible to predict. The bees' influence extended beyond what anyone had imagined. Their repeated visits to flowers meant more successful plant reproduction. More plants meant more shade, more food, and more moisture retention. These subtle changes hinted at a cascading effect, where a few tiny creatures could slowly reshape a barren landscape. The desert, known for its brutality, was bending, just slightly, to the will of these persistent insects. For the scientists, every day brought tension. A sandstorm could erase weeks of progress in minutes. Predators could decimate a microcolony before anyone realized it. Yet the bees continued their work, quietly, persistently, almost as if they understood their own importance. By month six, it became obvious that this was far more than a basic survival tale. The bees had become active engineers of their surroundings. The implications were huge. If a few colonies could nudge a barren landscape toward new growth, could this hidden transformation point to a future method for reviving other damaged ecosystems? Could these bees thrive long enough to make permanent changes in the Sahara? The answers hung in the air, charged with suspense, as the desert slowly began to reveal its secrets. A year of isolation. The moment the scientists stepped back and left the bee colonies on their own, a heavy sense of anticipation hung over the desert. For 12 months, no human intervention would occur. The bees were left to face the full force of the Sahara on their own. The researchers could only watch from afar, relying on drones and sensors to reveal every struggle and every small victory. The first weeks were brutal. Drone footage showed colonies shrinking as extreme heat and sudden sandstorms took their toll. The desert tested every bee to its limit. Some huddled in tight underground clusters to survive the blistering days, while others sought shelter in rock crevices when flash floods suddenly drenched parts of the sand. Every fluctuation in population felt like a heartbeat, a sign of life clinging desperately to existence. As months passed, a surprising pattern began to reveal itself. The initial decline slowed, and the colonies that survived began to stabilize. Small clusters of bees adapted to their environment in ways that defied expectations. They organized their micro-colonies more efficiently, coordinated foraging trips to maximize scarce nectar and dew, and even adjusted their flight paths to avoid the most exposed dunes. The drones captured it all, every cautious movement of wings against the scorching wind, every careful landing on the rare flowering shrub that dotted the barren landscape. The desert kept testing them relentlessly. Daytime temperatures climbed past 52 degrees Celsius, and nights dropped to around 2 degrees Celsius. Dust storms tore across their tiny colonies without warning, and sudden flash floods tore through the sand around their shelters. Every moment felt like a gamble, yet the bees kept going. Each one that made it through felt like a heartbeat of hope, and every cluster that held on kept the scientists holding their breath. The data from the year was unprecedented. Researchers could analyze minute-by-minute -minute activity, tracking how the bees responded to environmental stressors. Patterns of survival revealed complex behaviors, including communal water sharing, coordinated shelter building, and even risk management in their foraging trips. It became one of the most detailed records ever collected on insect endurance in extreme climates. Even from afar, the suspense was undeniable. The desert could erase entire colonies in a heartbeat, yet these tiny, fragile bees kept finding ways to survive. Every movement, every landing, every tiny sip of dew mattered. By the end of 12 months, the scientists recovered something. The recovery. After a full year, the scientists returned to the Sahara, hearts racing with both excitement and dread. The bees were not just alive, they were thriving. The tiny survivors had built permanent homes underground and in the cracks of sun-baked rocks. 
These micro-colonies were more than shelters. They had become fully functioning communities, carefully organized to survive the desert's relentless heat and freezing nights. As the researchers moved closer, they noticed subtle changes. Some bees had slightly smaller bodies, almost like they had slimmed down to survive with less water and food. Their wings looked stronger, more muscular, allowing longer flights between scarce resources. These were not random mutations, they were signs of rapid adaptation, proof that nature can adjust far quicker than anyone had imagined. The scientists documented every feature in detail, realizing that this tiny population had essentially rewritten the rules of desert survival. Even more astonishing was what came next. Evidence showed that the bees had successfully reproduced in these extreme conditions. New generations had emerged, forming the core of a growing population that had learned to thrive without human intervention. The researchers confirmed brood development inside some of the underground colonies. These were not merely survivors clinging to life, they were self-sustaining communities, capable of passing their adaptive traits to the next generation. These insects, that were once thought to be strictly dependent on temperate climates, had now proved they could endure, evolve, and even reproduce in one of the harshest environments on Earth. How far could this adaptation go? Could these colonies eventually expand beyond their current zones, gradually changing the surrounding desert ecosystem? The scientists moved carefully, knowing that any sudden interference could destroy months of progress. Every drone image and soil sample confirmed that the colonies had established underground networks, linked by tunnels that preserved moisture and protected them from predators and heat. Even the tiniest actions proved a level of intelligence and teamwork no one had seen before. Bees shared water droplets, changed their flight paths as the sand dunes moved, and returned to the same flower clusters to gather nectar efficiently. These repeated behaviors, multiplied across the entire population, revealed a surprising and complex system, far beyond what anyone had anticipated. By the time the team packed up their equipment, the sense of astonishment was overwhelming. The researchers left the desert stunned by what they had seen, unaware that their data was about to spark one of the biggest debates in modern ecology. Global Implications the moment news of the Sahara Bee experiment hit the scientific world, it caused a stir no one could ignore. Experts who had spent decades studying pollinators were suddenly faced with a reality they didn't think was possible. Tiny bees had not only survived a desert that should have killed them, but they had also found a way to thrive, reproduce, and even influence their surroundings. The implications were huge, and the tension was immediate. Everyone wanted to know what this meant for the future. Could these bees serve as a lifeline for regions where crops were failing and soils were turning to dust? Could they be part of a solution to global food insecurity? Scientists scrambled to draft plans for follow-up experiments. Ideas poured in at a rapid pace, testing pollination in other extreme environments, experimenting with moving bees into areas where ecosystems were on the brink of collapse, and even exploring ways to preserve and transport colonies under harsh conditions. Every plan carried promise, but every plan also carried risk. One wrong move could undo months or years of research, or worse, disrupt ecosystems in ways no one could predict. Farmers and governments were watching closely. Drought-stricken regions, places where desertification had eaten up once fertile lands, now seemed like potential testing grounds. The idea that bees could survive where no other pollinator could was tantalizing. Yet even as excitement grew, so did the suspense. What if these bees behaved differently outside the controlled experiment? Could they compete with local insects or spread disease? Each question added another layer of uncertainty, keeping everyone on edge. Meanwhile, footage of the Sahara colonies circulated online. People were captivated and uneasy at the same time. Tiny bees crawling over sand, clustering under rocks, or collecting dew from sparse flowers seemed almost heroic. Every small movement hinted at intelligence, coordination, and survival instincts that were previously unimaginable. Watching them work, it felt like life itself was being tested, and every day could bring a breakthrough, or a disaster. The experiment quickly became a reference point for discussions on ecological restoration, climate adaptation, and the future of agriculture. It proved that life could stretch beyond previously understood limits, but it also reminded the world of how fragile that life could be. Every decision in the next steps had stakes, and the slightest miscalculation could erase the fragile gains. What the Sahara bees had accomplished was more than survival. It was a glimpse into a new way of thinking about ecosystems, adaptation, and the tools humanity might use to fight environmental collapse. And yet, the suspense remained. The world had witnessed something extraordinary, but no one knew what would happen next. Every move forward carried hope, but also danger. Every step left scientists and observers holding their breath, waiting to see if life could truly rewrite the rules. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.